watching you on TV. Well, thanks uh, so we, much. Uh, we, we get you through satellite, but you guys keep up the good work. And God bless. God bless you. Thanks so much for calling. Praise the Lord. All right. Very good. Let's take the next caller right now. Welcome. You're on the air with Jesus or Muhammad. Yes, hello. Yes, welcome. Hello. Yes, hi. Um, I just wanted to see, I wanted to ask you guys, um, as far as the message of Adam and Abraham and Moses and Jesus and all the prophets up to the Prophet Muhammad, what was the one message that they carried? Okay, the one message that they carried. Uh, I'm going to let David answer that, but I'll just quickly say, that as Christians, we believe that the message of Muhammad was very different from the message of the others that you mentioned. Brother David, you want to address that? Is she asking even what Muhammad, what, what Muhammad she, had? She asked... Oh, no, not necessarily. Yeah. I'm not asking what Muhammad believed or what he didn't believe. Go ahead, go ahead and restate your question so Brother uh, yes, David I'm can sorry, answer I'm you. Sorry, I didn't clarify clearly. Uh, my question is that from the beginning of time, from the first man, which was Adam, to the next prophet, to the next prophet, all the way to the chain of all the messenger prophets, to the last prophet, Muhammad, what was the one clear message? I mean, even after Jesus or before Jesus, what was the one message that God commanded all his messengers and prophets to follow? Okay, and we already told you, and I'm going to let David answer, but we already told you that we disagree with you. We do not believe that there is one message between all of those prophets. We believe there is one <laughs> message. Wait a minute, wait a minute. There's a one message until Muhammad, and Muhammad changes the message drastically. Brother David, do you want to mention anything on that? Uh, well, I'd say the most, the most central message of, of all the true prophets, not Muhammad, of course, uh, but the true prophets is uh, when God speaks, you listen. Uh, when God speaks, you listen. Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. In other words, when God said, Abraham, this is the way it is, Abraham said, okay, that's the way it is. Even if I don't like it, even if I don't understand it, that's the way it is, and so I'm going to submit to God. And therefore, later on, uh, when the, the, the prophets uh, continued to expand upon our knowledge, for instance, when the prophet Isaiah said that God was going to enter into his creation and that a child would be born who was the mighty God. And later on, when the prophet Isaiah said that, uh, that someone would die on the cross for our sins, as, 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 as believers, we have to believe that God is going to enter into his creation and that someone is going to die for our sins. Yes. And then when Jesus comes along and he is clearly attested by God with miracles, signs and wonders that no, that no, mere, that no mere human being could ever perform, we have to say as Christians, uh, as believers in God, as anyone who submits to God, whatever that man says, I'm going to believe. If he claims that he's going to die on the cross for sins, that's what I'm going to believe, and that's exactly what the Old Testament prophets told us. If he says that he is the Lord, the divine Lord, I have to believe and submit to what he says. Therefore, uh, if Jesus tells me to believe in him, and he's the one who rose from the dead and lived the most miraculous life in history, I'm going to believe in him, which is why when another person claiming to be a prophet co comes much later and says, no, Jesus was just a prophet, he was just an ordinary human being, uh, don't, believe in, uh, don't believe in all this stuff about him dying on the cross and rising from the dead. That's why I have to reject Muhammad, because he disagrees and, uh, is, and contradicts the teachings of the messengers who, be, who came before him, including the prophet Isaiah, including the prophet David, including Jesus. Uh, so that's why we have to reject Muhammad as a prophet, in addition to all the other reasons for rejecting Muhammad as a prophet. Uh, but, but that's certainly one of them. All right, go ahead. Yes, I just, yes, I, I, I don't really believe that was the clear answer, but anyway. Oh, okay, uh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, the the so clear answer to... is we disagree. We disagree with your assumption that, that there is one message that was preached from Adam until Moses. We think that's a lie of the devil. I mean, from Adam until Muhammad. We think that's a lie of the devil. There was one message that was preached from Adam until Jesus. Muhammad came along and gave a completely different message. So we disagree with your assumption. You are not a different message. That is not a different message. He absolutely, came absolutely. Along. Jesus came hang along. On, hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> just, just, to, just to clarify, just clarifying, we'll, we'll let you speak. If Jesus said, if the, matter of fact, let's go 700 years before Jesus. The prophet Isaiah says, God is going to enter into his creation. A child is going to be born who's going to be the mighty God. He says, 
that a man is going to die on the cross for our sins, and then later on, Jesus enters, <laughs> Jesus enters creation. Uh, he claims, he makes claims that no mere prophet could ever make. He dies on the cross. He says beforehand, I'm going to die on the cross for sins. And then he rises from the dead. Muhammad comes along and he says, God never entered into his creation. Jesus wasn't God. He didn't die on the cross and he never rose from the dead. You don't see that those are two completely different messages. Your Hello? message of Christianity does not make sense. I'm sorry, the Trinity does not make sense. Explain the Trinity to anyone. It doesn't make sense. Oh, oh, oh. What, 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 what part, now look, what part doesn't make sense? Wait, but let me put it this way. Does, does God have the power to enter into his creation if he wants to? Sorry to say, to convert people to Christianity, it's not going to work. You guys are not scholars. Uh, okay, well, you know <laughs> what, scholars, hey, hey, listen, scholars don't convert. But the God who you're trying to know and do not know, he's the one that can change your heart. And he's the one who came to earth and loved you so much that he died for you. You may not understand it now, but yes, he loved you so much that that God that you're trying to believe in, he died for you. He lived the perfect life. You know you're a sinner. You know you've sinned. You know you're not the perfect Muslim. And how are you going to go to heaven? How are you going to take your sins into the presence of a holy and a perfect God? You will not make it. In Islam, how many sins did it take for Adam and Hawa to get kicked out of the garden? Just one sin. Have you sinned just one time? How do you think you will go to heaven, to Jannah, with just one sin? But you know you've sinned much more than that. The God that you don't know came into earth came into space-time to live a perfect life that you couldn't live, to die the death that you deserve, even to go to hell, resurrected on the third day that you might have everlasting life. That's what makes sense if you'll pray about it and seek God with all your heart. I'm taught min shayateen. Afwan, yani, I'm taught min shayateen. Afwan. Oh, we're from the devil. Okay, goodbye, goodbye, we'll pray for you. Goodbye, we'll pray for you. <laughs> now, now, uh, now what she just said, let me tell you what she said in European. She said, Afwan, I'm sorry, but enter min shayateen. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, you are from the devil. Yes. Okay, now go and ahead. Notice, yeah. notice, notice. She just condemned the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. She just condemned the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah said someone's going to die for our sins. Isaiah said God's going to enter into his creation. It's the prophet Isaiah. You can't say Christians invented this. This came long before Christianity. And Jesus himself claimed to be divine. He claimed that he was going to die on the cross for sins and then he would rise from the dead. We simply repeated what they said and you say that's of the devil. You just said that Jesus is of the devil and the prophet Isaiah is of the devil. Well, guess what? Islam can't be true then because Muhammad said you have to believe what Jesus says and yeah. you have to believe the, the previous exactly. prophets. So you just not only rejected Christianity, you also rejected Islam by saying that Muhammad's teachings were of the devil because he commanded you to follow the teachings of Jesus, which you just said were the teachings of the devil. Now, now think about this, because Muslims always say, ah, oh, this doesn't make sense. How can, you, how, can you, how can you die for someone's sins? Well, I would refer you to Sahih Muslim, where Muhammad says over and over and over again that the Jews and the Christians are going to be punished in hell. The, the sins of Muslims are going to be placed on the Jews and Christians in hell. Mm -hmm. So think about this. Muhammad says multiple times in Sahih Muslim, one of your two most trusted collections of ahadith, that Jews and Christians are going to suffer in hell for the sins of Muslims. In order to admit Muslims into paradise, someone has to pay for those sins. And according to Muhammad himself, Jews and Christians are going to pay for the sins of Muslims. So in saying that that's, that's horrible and that doesn't make sense, you just once again condemned Muhammad. Think about this. She said the Trinity doesn't make sense. She ridiculed the idea of the Trinity. What, 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 claim, what, what do we claim about the Trinity? God is one in being, one in essence, and three in person. And Muslims, ah, that's a clear contradiction. That would be, that would be three gods. That would be polytheism. Think about this. These same Muslims would say that God is one, and yet he has many attributes. So his, his, he's got his justice and yeah. he's got his mercy. Yeah. And even in Islam, they're in conflict. Right. So there are two different things yeah. going on in Allah. There's Allah's justice and there's Allah's mercy. But they would never say this means there has to, there has to be two gods. Yeah. So what do you have here? You would say that God is one in essence, one in being, and yet he has many attributes that are, that are different. They're distinct. Yeah. So think about what you're saying here. God is one in being 
and many in attribute. He has one essence and yet many attributes. And you would never say, oh, that, that means you, there have to be many gods. There's God's justice and that's one God. And there's God's mercy and that's another God. You would never say that. And I agree with you. You shouldn't say that.